Hi, in this video we're going to be doing a three-point bend test on a composite sandwich panel. So let's get started with the ACP side. So we drag over an ACP cell to the workbench. Uh, let's open up the engineering data. Now we want to go file and import engineering data. So you'll have a folder which contains um, engineering data for two materials. We have the honeycomb and we also have the plane weave. So let's import them both. Or if the material data isn't available, use the material data found in the ANSYS library. Now we want to import the geometry. Let's go import. And the composite section is called quarter panel. So let's import that. And let's open up the model cell. And now we want to begin creating the mesh. So if we go right click to insert a new sizing, uh, let's do two edge sizings here, uh, making note of the direction of the plate. So we have Z pointing up and Y pointing to the left with X pointing into the screen. Uh, let's set the element size here to be four. And let's do a bias sizing uh, pointing that direction and let's say we want it to be around eight okay so our bias is pointing the wrong direction so let's change the bias and flip it to the other way cool and our bias is pointing in the right direction um, now we want to do another edge size um, we want to size the uh, opposite two edges here and here and let's just set that to have a default size of around four mil and now if we go insert face meshing, we can insert a Cartesian grid uh, onto this surface here. And if we go generate mesh, we've created a nice structured grid, which is biased towards um, this edge here. Also make sure that your surface thickness is set to one mil. Uh, this, this thickness doesn't matter. Um, ACP will change it anyway once we do the stack up. But to create a mesh, uh, you need to define a thickness. So just enter a value here. Okay, now that we've created the mesh, we can go to the cell, right click, update. And now we can go into the ACP cell. Okay, let's make a start in ACP. So let's go to fabrics, uh, create fabric. Let's call it HC for honeycomb. Uh, select the alley honeycomb. Uh, the thickness is set to 14 millimeters and hit OK. Uh, create fabric again. Let's call it carbon. The material is plain weave and the thickness will be 0.2 millimeters. And also making sure that our units are set to millimeters. Okay, let's create a stack up. So if you go create stack up, we can say this will be the carbon fabric. Uh, set to zero degrees of rotation. So if we go carbon again, let's set this to negative 30. Uh, carbon, set this to 45. Uh, 30. And zero. And let's just call this carbon stack up. Okay, now we need to create a rosette. So let's first draw the grid. And we can see that our directionality is pointing downwards. So if we go rosettes, uh, right click create rosette. Uh, let's keep the origin at zero, zero. Um, set the first direction to be pointing upwards. Uh, select uh, the cell. So select a cell and then select any cell that's a vertical of it. Uh, control click, so go one direction, click, control click and that'll select a vector going in that direction and repeat the process for direction two. So select a cell, select a cell that's horizontal and it'll create a vector along that line. Uh, select okay. And now we wanna create an, an oriented selection set. So go create uh, element sets. So we just wanna select all elements. Uh, select any point on the grid, so just click. And uh, in this case, the direction will be pointing in the negative negative Z direction. So let's keep that as default. And select rosettes and select the rosette that we just made and hit OK. 
Now we want to create a modeling group. So let's call this top skin. Uh, we go create ply. Select the oriented set we just created. And now we want to use the carbon stack up as our material. So instead of having to individually add uh, each of the carbon layers, we can just select the stack up and it'll do it for us. Uh, select the ply angle, uh, keep the ply angle at zero, and we'll keep the number of layers at one. Uh, hit OK. And now let's create the honeycomb. So let's just call it core. Uh, create ply. Uh, select the set. Uh, honeycomb. Uh, let's keep the ply angle at zero and keep the number of layers at one. And now let's repeat the process for the bottom skin. Yep, so go create modeling group. Go right click, create ply. Rented set. Carbon stack up, zero. Okay. Now if we update, we can see that our laminate is a constant thickness of 16 millimeters. And now if we want to uh, export a solid model, we can go solid model, right click, create, uh, element sets, all elements. And we can just keep everything else as default because we don't have any drop offs or cut offs or anything like that. So we just hit apply. Cool. And now we've created our sandwich panel. We can now close ACP. And now you want to drag over a static structural cell and connect the setup to the model and transfer the solid composite data. And now we've connected the two cells, we can update the setup cell. Okay, now we can do our non-composite materials. So if we go down and create a mechanical model cell, let's keep the engineering data as it is. And let's import the support assembly and we go into model. Okay, on screen we now have our two supports. Um, they can sit in this orientation so the, the plate is supported by this and this object is what uh, imparts a load. So we have two question marks here so we need to assign a thickness. Let's say the thickness is one millimeter uh, for both. And now we want to start generating the mesh. So let's add a edge sizing onto uh, these two edges here. So if we go mesh, insert sizing, um, use the edge selector. And let's select here and here. Uh, set the element size to be one millimeter. And let's also positively bias it towards the center. And let's set the bias factor to four. So if we scroll in, we can see that the seeds are larger towards the edges and closer together near the top. Uh, this is because this is where the plate actually sits. So we want to add more elements there to make sure that we can observe the, observe the stresses there a little, with a little bit more refinement. Okay, so let's add um, sizings to the other edges. So if we go these two, and let's set the element size to 4mm, and let's add a face mesh to that object. Cool, now let's repeat the process for the other, for the other roller, so if we go sizing, set the edge sizing to these two, apply, and let's set the element size to 1mm, and let's add a bias. This time it'll be a left-leaning bias, and we'll set the bias factor to four. So if we scroll in, we can see that this one's pointing upwards. Okay, they're both pointing upwards, so we just need to flip the bias factor. So instead of that one, let's do this one. And now the bias is leaning the right direction. Cool. And now let's add another edge sizing. face meshing to this roller as well and we can generate the mesh cool so now we can see that there's smaller elements where we contact 
where we contact the side and larger elements. Yep. Okay, we're now done meshing these components, so we can just close. And now we want to connect the model cell to our static structural model cell, and let's update it. Okay, now that that's done, we can enter the model cell for the static structural. Okay, now that we've loaded into static structural, uh, we can see that the composite plate is is uh, positioned in space correctly relative to the rollers. We are now going to set up the contacts. For more info, follow the links in the description or see the answers help. So let's go to connections. Uh, let's have a look at how the plate contacts to the to the rollers. So if we just go contact and go render based on definition. So we have the support here. That's this one here. Uh, we want to change the type to be frictionless and we now need to change the uh, contact shell face to be top. Setting to top applies the contact on the geometry surface. Setting to bottom applies the contact on the extruded face. Uh, let's change the formulation. Uh, this will be augmented Lagrange. Uh, let's change the behavior to be uh, axisymmetric, sorry, asymmetric. Again, for more info on this, please see the description. Let's change the detection method to be on Gauss point. Uh, we want to go normal stiffness, uh, let's change this to factor, uh, keep, the, keep the factor as 1, and we want to update the stiffness every iteration. And now we want to repeat the process for the, for the roller, so if we change the type to frictionless, we need to update the shell face to top, same as before. Um, change the behavior to be asymmetric. Uh, change the formulation, augmented Lagrange. Detection method is on gas point. Normal stiffness, factor one. And update every iteration. Cool, those are these um, contacts done. Okay, now that we have set up the contacts, now we need to go to the analysis settings. Uh, we want to change the auto time stepping, so let's change that to on. Uh, we want to define by sub steps, so let's set initial sub steps to be 40. Uh, let's set the maximum to 40 as well. And let's just keep the minimum at 1. Uh, solver type, keep that as program controlled. Make sure that weak springs is disabled and make sure that large deflection is also disabled. And now we can set up our boundary conditions. So on our support, we want to go insert fix support. So this will keep this surface from moving. Now we want to go and create a remote displacement. So let's scope it to this surface. Let's say that the X component is not moving. The Y component is also not moving. Uh, the Z component can move in negative 14 millimeters and it cannot rotate. So let's fix the rotation. And now because we have symmetry, so this geometry is actually a quarter symmetry of a actual three-point plate. So it's being cut along this face and along this face. We now want to add a frictionless support. Uh, between these two and this will model the the effect of the symmetry essentially And now our uh, boundary conditions are fully set up, so we're good to solve When you're simulating um, go to solution at go to solution information and then go to Solution Output and select Force Convergence. Uh, here you can see the residual plot based on the force. Okay, so now that the solution is solved, you can go Insert Deformation Total. Then you can go Evaluate. And this is the deformation of the, of the plate. So we can see it deforms 
uh, 14.9 mil and it actually Now to view the stress, we can go into ACP post. So if we exit out of this, drag over an ACP post cell uh, over the model cell. If we go solution and drag that over to results, uh, hit update. So that will send the data to the result cell. So now we can double tap this and we open up ACP post. So now we're in ACP post, we want to go definitions, right click, create failure criteria. Uh, select max strain, uh, max stress, say woo, say hill. For more information, see the answers help on composite failure criteria. The link will be in the description. And we want to head over to sandwich criteria. Uh, we want to select core failure and select apply and OK. OK, so now we want to go to solutions. Uh, solution one, go create failure. Here we want to go uh, select apply wise. We want to show critical failure mode. And we want to select the failure criteria definition and we go failure criteria one. Uh, make sure that entire model is selected and hit apply. Okay. So now we want to go up to our layers. So they're under modeling groups. Uh, let's say top skin. So now we can select our individual layers and it'll plot uh, the stress on the layers. So here we're looking at top layer, uh, top layer number one. And the letters here tell us what what has failed. And in the uh, in the legend here, essentially we have a ranking of of the level of failure. So zero means no failure, one means we failed, and here we can see the maximum failure is 1.125. So the component has most definitely failed. And we can just scroll through the different layers. If we go to core. tell us if the cores failed. So here we're seeing a lot of CF which means core failure. And we can go through the bottom skin as well. Okay, thanks for watching.